coarctation of the aorta is the topic. And I'll start by drawing a very basic diagram of this um, anatomy. So here you have a person with arms and the neck, and here's the um, heart. And coming out from the heart is a large blood vessel that we know as the aorta. And I'll draw some branches. One's going to one arm, one branch is going to another arm, another branch is going to this arm, and then finally the aorta then curves down into the descending aorta. Then what happens is you have this narrowing, and that narrowing is essentially what we are talking about in this video, and that is known as a coarctation. Now this coarctation has some very significant consequences. Now remember the heart is pumping blood out into the aorta, and the blood then goes into the branches, of course, to the neck, to the arms, and then eventually down through the descending aorta. Now if there's this a narrowing here, that has some very specific consequences. The first thing that happens is the heart then has to pump harder. And if it has to pump harder, this left ventricle, which is where the blood comes out of, will become hypertrophied. So the first thing that happens is left ventricular hypertrophy. And um, that's a direct consequence of the heart having to beat. Uh, pump harder. The next thing that happens is take a look at what happen, what's happening here in the upper extremities here. Here you have the arms. The pressure before the coarctation in this area that I'm drawing red lines in will be higher. So you will have essentially increased blood pressure in the upper extremities. And similarly, the pressure after the coarctation, coarctation in this area will be lower. So you will have lower blood pressure in the lower extremities. So that is a, a very uh, key understanding to the anatomy of coarctation of the aorta. So now let's go back into some of the very basics uh, in terms of uh, defining this. It's a narrowing of the aortic lumen, as I had uh, previously drawn. And it results in upper extremity uh, hypertension. And unfortunately, it will result in malperfusion, lack of blood flow uh, to the lower extremity. It's um, a little bit more common in men versus uh, women, two to one. And what's really important to mention, a lot of clinical vignettes talk about the next point, is up to 20% of patients with Turner syndrome will have coarctation of the aorta. And uh, the characteristic karyotype is XO. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So what are the symptoms? Well, as uh, we described earlier, you'll have um, increased uh, blood pressure in the upper extremities. And you'll also have uh, strong pulses in the upper extremities. And um, in contrast, you'll have diminished or diminished or delayed pulses um, in the femoral area. And of course, you'll have a low blood pressure in the lower extremities. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about Turner syndrome, just because uh, it's up to 20% of patients with Turner syndrome will have coarctation of the aorta. And because of that, a lot of clinical vignettes talk about it. When you're doing a physical exam or you're talking to the patient uh, to try to get a history, it's important to see if you can detect signs of Turner syndrome. And some of those include a patient that has a web neck, Turner syndrome patients will have widely spaced nipples that you can detect on the physical exam. Also, um, they tend to be shorter, short stature. Turner syndrome patients are infertile, so 
they will not have uh, any um, uh, OB history basically there will be G0 P0 so just keep those uh, things in mind now let's talk a little bit about the diagnosis well really the, the first thing of course is measuring the blood pressure measure the blood pressure in all four extremities and you will essentially see that the blood pressure is high in the upper extremities compared to the lower extremities the other test is a chest x-ray now the chest x-ray shows something that is very important it's called rib notching now what's rib notching essentially it's a gradual erosion of the bones and the reason this happens is because during coarctation of the aorta a large amount of blood is basically uh, going through the collateral uh, arteries intercostal arteries and as a result over time you get this gradual erosion of those bones that are in the close proximity gradual erosion of the adjacent bones so it's an important uh, diagnostic feature in the workup of Turner syndrome another test that's very simple to do is an EKG and that will of course show left ventricular hypertrophy because in Turner syndrome um, or in particular coarctation of the aorta the heart pumps harder and as a result the left ventricular muscle hypertrophies so what is the treatment uh, the first thing uh, that they give is uh, something known as prostaglandin and prostaglandin E1 in particular and the reason this is given is because prostaglandin E1 helps to allow blood to go uh, to the lower extremities so what happens is when you uh, give prostaglandin it opens up that ductus arteriosus which helps allow blood from the pulmonary artery to go to the descending aorta and this essentially is important because it helps to improve the systemic perfusion the next part of the treatment is uh, if the patient does indeed have uh, upper extremity high blood pressure upper extremity hypertension is a blood pressure medication known as a beta blocker it's commonly used in coarctation of the aorta treatment and then the third and of course definitive treatment is surgical correction of course surgical correction of the coarctation uh, of the narrowing okay let's take a look at a uh, few vignettes and see what this looks like on a routine exam of a new patient diminished blood pressure readings are found in adolescent legs relative to that found in upper extremities you suspect coarctation of the aorta each of the following may be associated with coarctation except well let's go through these this may be an XO female patient it's possible so that because XO is a karyotype in Turner so that's right there may be notching of the ribs seen on x-ray that's correct because a large volume of blood through the intercostal arteries results in this gradual erosion of those adjacent bones a delay in femoral pulse may be found that's correct cyanosis of lips clubbing of the fingernails lips and fingernails no patient is more likely to be male and female yes male to female is about two to one so by uh, our process of elimination we've come to basically choice D as the correct answer and next question a 22 year old woman presented 
As a new patient for general medical care seven months ago, she had a blood pressure of 180 over 110. One month after initiation of hydrochlorothiazide, her blood pressure was 175 over 110. Two other antihypertensive medications were added during the next six months with little success. Social history reveals that she has had many sexual partners and does not use contraception. She is G0P0. Physical exam, she has short stature, as well as cubitus valgus, which of the following conditions is most likely cause of the woman's hypertension. Interesting question here. Basically, they're trying to show you clues that she has Turner syndrome. She's infertile. She has short, short stature. Uh, cubitus valgus is another feature of the forearm that involves the forearm. And she has Turner syndrome. And because she has Turner syndrome, as you remember, up to 20% can have coarctation of the aorta. And um, that's why she has high blood pressure. And essentially that's what they're asking most likely cause of her hypertension so she has a secondary hypertension uh, cause and that would be coarctation of the aorta as being her reason for elevated blood pressure which of the following tests might prove useful well the very first uh, test that i would probably do other than measuring her blood pressure which has already been done is either an EKG or a chest x-ray. Very relatively simple tests. EKG will show left ventricular hypertrophy. Chest x-ray will show those that uh, rib notching that we talked about. And that would be choice A.